My daughters tried the new home theater last night and the reviews are in. It's freaking awesome. Jake, check it out. I mounted the projector by putting it on a subwoofer box on top of one of the chairs. I've got a laptop here with uh, the best movie content and the best laptop speaker system. And I got around the power outlet and ethernet jack in the middle of the wall by simply projecting onto the right hand side. It's basically flawless. It looks awful. Yes. <laughs> so when they watch the second half of The Bad Guys tonight, yeah. they're gonna be absolutely blown away because today we are gonna be putting up the projector screen, ceiling mounting the projector, and going from laptop speakers to 7.2.4. I think we're missing one pair of the speakers still, but 5.2.4. Oh. And we're going to tell you about our sponsor. Ow. Ridge, time to ditch that bulky wallet. The Ridge wallet can hold up to 12 cards, comes with a cash strap or money clip, and makes a great gift for dad. Get 15% off until June 8th at ridge.com slash Linus. The bad news is we have a lot of work to do today. The good news is we have some awesome helpers. We've got Dan, we've got Jamie, who is actually wearing his old Geek Squad sweater, which I love. And they've already done some of the most tedious work for us, setting up the projector screen. How'd it go? It took five hours or something like that. Five hours? Yeah, well. What the? Now, I gotta ask Jake, I was in there last night and this projector is so bright that even projecting on a black wall at 50% brightness, it's like extremely usable. So why did we go with a white <gasps> screen instead of a gray or a, or a black screen? It's a great question. This is the screen they sent when I asked for a screen. Okay. Yeah. It's a high resolution optimized screen at least. This yeah. is their 8K model. And that basically comes down to the, the smoothness and the finish of the, uh, well, the white part, which doesn't have to be white, but on this one it's white. It has a really small frame. I'm a little bit surprised at that. I guess it gives you a clean look, but it also gives you less um, tolerance for light spill over the edge or anything But it's like, like that, that velour to absorb any extra light. And there's even like backlighting, although I don't think we're ever gonna use that. Yeah, so bias lighting is included as a feature. No, it no, appears no. to be RGB. It's not like automatic bias lighting. Oh, it's just wait, what? backlighting. No, it just looks a color, you said it. Uh, okay. It comes with a little remote and you can change it whatever color you want. Otherwise known as we're not gonna plug it in. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, thanks for sticking it on though. Hey, you're welcome, it only took an hour. Okay, should you and I work on speakers while these boys finish up the screen? Sure. Sure. Okay, we need to figure out how high the screen's going. This is actually very important. I hate to be that guy, but I think we have to pull the screen in here for me to be able to visualize this. There's no way I'm just gonna be able to like see it in my mind's eye. We could put tape. That's probably more work than yeah, just- Yeah, let's just go get the screen in Look, we have two lovely assistants that can hey! hold it up for us. There they are. They're so lovely. And Dan and Jamie are here. Hey. You. I'm knighting you. Knight of the tech tips. Lift up. Well, that's clearly too low. Mm -hmm. Yes, thanks tips. That's are you feeling that? That's a little high. Yeah, it's a little high. Both down a little. How's that feel? Okay, all right, top one. Okay, thanks guys. Wonderful. All right, we're trying to get all the sawdust off of the speakers oh, I was here. just blowing it onto you. Ah! Oh, thanks. Here, turn around. Stop. The speakers have been in storage for the better part of a year, actually. But we're finally ready to crack them out. And we realized that, see, Jake, can you stop? What, are you trying to talk? It's like a child. I remember this conversation about the surrounds too. And the way that I remember it going was that we thought we were too short, but there's actually two speakers per box. So we did have the right number. No. no that's not how it went. We were just missing a box. Um, because of some miscommunication, I asked for another box and I think maybe they forgot to send it. Cool. So we might just be hanging five for now. Okay. And then we'll add the other ones later. I think hey, I'm quite question, good at blowing. Question for you, how many lunches do you already owe me? <laughs> do you want to bet lunch? Two, I think. Do you want to bet lunch that there are four surrounds here? I mean, I'd like for them to be here, sure. Right. Two lunches the other way. So if, okay. if they Double aren't nothing, here, I understand. we're back to zero. All right. Okay, okay. okay here they are. 
Oh, you suck. Really? <laughs> you actually suck. That's that's scam. Do I suck or am I a big giant winner? You're just a cheater. Uh, I already emailed them. You already knew. You suck. What? No, I found them just now. That's in, yeah, just now when you were in there. It took me like 10 seconds Screw to find you. them. Screw you. You probably put them there. No. Oh, I wish we didn't buy such nice speakers because they're so heavy. Didn't SVS send them? Yeah, oh. but still. Then you just wish we didn't request such Well, things. I mean, I did. I do. I still remember how James, I think, was the one who sold me on these cylindrical subwoofers. I don't know why. Based on that they had a smaller footprint. <laughs> By how much though, James? Wait, isn't this the, okay, so it's not much smaller than the SB2000, which is over there, which is just a little sealed subwoofer. But if you move up to the ported one, it's like, right. Like it's enormous. But this is ported. This is ported and it doesn't take, it basically takes up less floor space than that one. Dan, you wanna see some big subs? That's a subwoofer? No, it's more of a super woofer. Are you insane? <laughs> There's two of them. Who ordered those? I blame Jake. James actually ordered. Tell me something. Okay. You're the actual audio nerd. Dan, one of Dan's many previous jobs was working in a recording studio. That's right. What direction does this need to go? Does it matter? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So it could just point at the wall and we could get that nice clean look? Yeah. The nice thing about subwoofers, uh, especially ones this size, you can really put them anywhere. The frequencies that you're going to get from a subwoofer are like feet. I thought that's like a lie though, that you can put them just like wherever you want. It's not wherever, wherever, but it's not as critical as like tweeters or whatever else. Got it. Okay. Okay, but like, yeah, maybe it's a little ugly, but like kind of... Maybe oh, you see the woofer on the Maybe bottom it's a little ugly, he says. For the viewers at home, Jake's concern is that by the time you put these subwoofers here, they could actually impact your ability to see the very corner of the screen, depending where in the room you're sitting. And also block sound from the tower speakers. Let's just put them in and see what happens. They're only uh, they're only like 86 pounds. You can hand bomb that yourself, right? Nope. No? Oh, you're gonna give me the <laughs> sign? <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Remember carrying the couch upstairs when you almost killed me? That was fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, no. Oh, I'm getting crushed. Oh, my butthole. Oh, remember how we gave that couch to my in-laws and didn't even use it? <laughs> he doesn't know about that yet. <laughs> ah, ah, no. <laughs> now I have the power. Oh Jesus. Oh yes, the speaker grills. I can't wait to throw these away. The tweeter has a mesh thing. You can't. Yeah, but it. these don't. Can you stop? It's See, not look, like a dome, happens. it's like. Yeah. Child sees it, child immediately starts poking uh, at it. Gorgeous. We mapped out the external of the screen. It's and, true, we did that. Uh, we've got our cleat location, and I guess we'll start drilling holes in the wall. Hey, David. Hi. It's Real Talk with Dan and Jamie. Uh, Real Talk, Dan put it against the wall. Look, hey, we used a stud finder and look how much, much of a stud it misses. It misses all of them. Uh, so our studs are here yeah. and here <laughs> and the holes are not on top of those. So guess what we get to do? Make new holes, I guess. I don't know. Uh, yay. Yay. Uh, anyway, that's your update. Goodbye, everyone. You just trying to plan this out? Yeah, I remember these speakers are kind of confusing because there's actually a couple different ways you can hook them up. Either We're not you doing can have them, mode. right? But you can have them act as two independent speakers, or you can have them act as a single one. And then yeah. doesn't SVS say you position it like kind of back here, and then one speaker will bounce off the back to give you like phantom surround backs. Yeah, but they're real. Um, and then this would act as your just your surround. Right, but if you don't do that, you're supposed to just point them like wood part out. Yeah, kind of. So weird to me. Had we given any thought to how to mount these at all? Do we have like wall uh, So they things? come with little cleats and then you put feet on the bottom. So they're slightly off space from the wall. Yeah. And then they have fancy, really low profile cables. Oh. Um, but we still should probably put them just above these plates. I yeah, think. yeah, that was I think the idea, like right here-ish. And then there'll be a little banana plug thing here and the two yeah. banana plugs will go in and they'll go into there. Okay. The actual speakers on the top are above this for the most part? Because you're gonna be a little bit higher back there. Yeah, I'll be right about, I'll be right about here. I think it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> David was just doing a voice for the people in the comments that are gonna say, I'm actually how it should be. Uh, we know, okay, we know the center channel should go behind the screen, but we aren't gonna do that. Oh yeah, where's the center channel gonna go? 
just plonked. We were talking about the cleats to mount the speakers. That's how pretty they are. Is this it? Yeah, one for each speaker. That holds up the whole speaker? Yeah, and then there's little feet on the bottom that kind of like brace it off against the wall. This is Jeez. probably like that. And then you see there's little like things on the side mm -hmm. so that you have to put it right in the middle. You can't slide it back and forth. Perfect. Very smart. I'm looking into how we're gonna mount these now. Um, drywall anchors. Yeah. Yeah, I have we drywall ha anchors. We have toggles too, which are like oh, beefy drywall ankles. A lot of work. And honestly, like Don't the way these it. are gonna hang off the Drywall, I think regular anchors are, but I have good anchors. I'll go get my anchors, I'll show them to you. Show me your anchors. You shouldn't look directly into the laser level, right? Uh, too late on that one for me. Oh, okay, how's... Uh, I can't see anything. You can't, oh, okay. I don't think there's any room in this house that I am more excited for. Like, my last house was honestly perfect. I could have stayed there forever, but the one thing that I was always like, Vaughn, you know, <laughs> I really want a theater room. I want a basement with this, a theater room in. And this projector is so awesome. <laughs> um, what the f was that? That's okay. the centerpiece oh. of the screen. Okay, it's only a little bent. Yeah, you know, Jake. What? I think we had accounted for the screen being higher because there's not really room for the center channel there. Yeah, there totally is. Not, it's not that tall. Not in also being able to lift up the stage. Our one concern about the height right now is that the center channel is basically gonna make it impossible to open these up any higher than about like this. <laughs> I like the height though. Yeah, I don't really wanna mess with it. Can you show me how high you can lift up this stage? Oh, that's enough to be able to cable manage. Totally. I'm over it. So, yep, I'm completely over it. It'll sit here for now while we get a wall mount. This is cool. We've actually got each of our speaker locations wired up twice, and this ended up being a miscommunication with the low voltage uh, people. But it worked out really well because they're wired up once, and this is with four conductors, so I guess we could bi-amp them or run them in duet mode if we really wanted to. That's going to this closet right here. So you can have your receiver there with your connections to all your subwoofers and speakers, and you got ethernet and power and all that good stuff in there. And then it's actually wired up again with just two conductors to the mechanical room. So if we wanted to rack mount everything in a completely separate room for perfect silence, that could also be done. Technically, um, these are just random wood screws, not Deck the ones screws. that came with, yeah. Um, but it seems like yeah, it'll thread in there, okay? And actually, the way that these plastic ones flare out, it just yeah. breaks off anyways, so it should be fine. Yeah, it should be. It should operate pretty much the same way it's supposed to. And if it doesn't, we're gonna find that out really quickly. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be the first thing that fell off the wall today. Right. The bar fell out again. What? Yeah. What do you guys think? It's really bent now. There's no way to retain it in the screen. Mm -hmm. Then the thing is that Jamie tells me the bar is really just to stop the screen from like coming in and out. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's just to keep it, the fabric a little bit more rigid. Well, we should still put it back in. Big moment time. Here we go. Big moment energy. Yeah, it's really tight, those screws. Oh. Uh, you gotta go over a little yeah. bit. Give it a little wiggle, waggle, woggle. Oof, that made it. Oh, baby. Okay, we're back from lunch, and I think the plan is that I'm gonna finish up the last three speakers, and uh, the professionals here, are gonna start figuring out the professional mount, the projector mount. Sure. According to this thing, we have to start with the scary part, which is drilling a hole in the ceiling. Uh-oh. You guys excited? No. no. Oh, when you have a projector like the LS12000, which has a optical zoom, you can kind of position the projector wherever you want, but there is a minimum distance. And if you go within that, it's not gonna fill the whole screen. Now, ideally, we put it exactly at the minimum distance, because then we don't have to use the zoom, which means we get the most amount of light. Right, but we also have like very ample light for our light control environment. Yes, yeah, so we'll probably put it, you know, six inches past. Uh -huh. Yeah, something like that. Cool, but we do kind of need to see how this goes together before we can drill the hole. Mm. This is the Epson screen calculator thing. You basically punch in what projector you have, uh, tell it what size screen you have and the aspect ratio, and it tells you your usable throw distances. So our minimum is around 142 inches, which is just, just under 12 feet. So I'm thinking we're gonna try to mount it around 12 feet, six inches or so, just to give us, ourselves a little bit of wiggle room. And then we'll use a tiny bit of zoom, but not enough that it's gonna impact our light output by any amount that we'll be able to tell. Cool. Wow, holy crap, we are very far. Um, so this is like 14 feet. 
the issue is just that this is where our access panel is for HDMI and power. So unless we want to have wires running across the ceiling like that, also it gets the fan from the projector closer to the front primo seats. I did ah. tell the contractors 12 to 13 feet, and this is like 16, but whatever. I it's mean, fine. you don't want to see the projector either though. So I, 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 I get it. It's black. Yeah. I don't want to see it. All right, we're time. just going to put it like here ish, yeah. where the stud is. All yeah. right. Okay. Cool. Wow, that's huh. like actually pretty nice. And we've got a knob there to hold it on, and another one this side to lock it in there. And it's uh, threaded as well. All of this is metal. This is a really good mount. That's amazing. The way I had envisioned this was that we were going to have like shelves for them to sit on because I'm an idiot. So this is way better. Once that plate's in there and it's just like banana plugged in, it's going to look so clean. Hopefully, these screws are going to be tight enough so this won't fall on Linus's kids. What? Nothing. Jesus Christ, Dan, that's dark. If anybody is bored, we could go get the receiver. Oh, yeah, look at that transformer. Well, the issue is that it only has a single uh, 4K 120 hertz input. Uh... Or is it a single or a dual? I don't, I don't remember. The point is there's much lower end models that cost like half as much that are more functional for what I would need. And I think that by the time that room reaches its final form, this will have been replaced by an HDMI matrix switcher and some other amplification solution, and this will be completely, utterly irrelevant. Sounds about right. It looks pretty, though. OK, you want to grab a side? I'll say. try. Oh, my god. The stud is like here, so I could have it here. Yeah. And the projector would come back to like there. And then there'd be kind of a jump to That's the... fine. Or the next option is like right No, there. no, no, no. OK, so let's put it on this one. Yeah. I picked up an NVIDIA Shield TV Pro as well. I have the regular Shield TV, but I'm gonna put that somewhere else because if there's anywhere that we're gonna want 4K upscaling, in the theater room it's gonna be the place. Ah, and no offense to, what is it, Denon or whatever? Yeah. yeah, no offense, but NVIDIA's AI upscaling is probably better than whatever crap you're doing. And then for the PC, <laughs> this is our original Founders 3080 that I like, temporarily took to put in my VR gaming rig as like a troubleshooting thing and then never brought back to the office. So, well, sorry about that. It's the last scary thing. We're drilling in the projector mount. Uh-oh. I hope I don't hit anything. Well, you hope you hit a stud. Oh, I definitely hit a stud. That's good. Oh, God. I mean, that's not really going to do anything, but screw it, whatever. Hey, David, David, yeah. do you like my computer chair? Get it? Hey! It's a computer! And it's a chair. Okay, oh gonna, my gosh. We're gonna gaslight Jamie. He, he had to stop and take a leak and he put this outside the bathroom door so when he comes back, everyone just be like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Are you coming back? Are you gonna come back with sockets at some point? I know, I just have to go to the bathroom and they disappeared. What? Well, where'd you put them? <sighs> Is there any other sockets anywhere? No, I only have the one. Wait, well, did you get, did you get like my sockets? Like, did you get the ones in the, in the drawer? Yeah. Well, where are you? I put them down and then I came out and they were gone. Like, There's like, no one else here. They didn't spring legs and just screw off. I, I believe you because uh, I moved them. <laughs> God, you suck. How much would you tow these in, Dan? Who's your main, where are you gonna sit? David. Where David is? Yeah. Point it at his left ear. Oh, that's looks gonna look so stupid though. Yeah. So point it like, <laughs> point it like most of the way to his left ear. We got power in here. We got a projector on the ceiling. Um, what else is going on here? Oh wow, that is very not straight. There's a lot of HDMI cable in here, Jake. <laughs> Where is Ron expecting us to? Okay, well there, exactly right there. Okay, display side, good. He ran it the right way. They're okay. directional. This is an optical. HDMI cable, which means that it's got to go well one way, and this is the correct way. We had three power cables, and it probably doesn't matter, but the thicker ones we definitely used for the subs. They can drop to 1,500 watts each at peak, which is why this room has so many freaking circuits in it. Each of those subwoofers is plugged into a, a duplex receptacle that has its own dedicated circuit. I believe this is a dedicated circuit to the projector up here because there can be pretty power hungry projectors. I think this one will do like 300 watts or something yeah. like that. Um, and then I forget where the other circuits are in here. I believe there's a dedicated two to that closet for just, you know, receivers and gaming PCs and Xboxes and all that kind of stuff. And we are powered up, ladies and gentlemen. Where is the remote? I don't think that thing's powered, dude. 
the circuit and the ceiling's oh, off. We figured out the problem. The projector shares a circuit with this boy, which is. Wow, you're just gonna grab it? I didn't even say I turned it off yet. Yeah, I know it's off. It's already off. No, That's it was problem. on. It was on. It was on. Yeah, it's okay. off now. It's off. Well, now. anyway, <laughs> this boy is power for the stage, which the back row is gonna sit on. It's gonna be about 12, 13 inches high, and it'll have power inside it for the powered seats. Um, well, as you can see, it's just bare freaking wires. So having that circuit on is pretty dangerous. But what we can do is we can just, uh, oh, where'd my strippers go? Yeah, we can just cap it off and then we should be good to go. It's not like there'll be kids in here or anything. Cool, let's go flip that switch back on. Yay. Watch that light on fire now. Much safer. Wait, are we, are we doing it? I just pressed the button. Oh God, this is not. Just a second. Hold on, there's a plan. I need to do a teddy bear stand. Okay, so just go, um, Oh, God. Maybe it's initial all settings. This is actually a way smarter way to do this. There we go. Okay. Okay. See you later. Hey, 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 hey. Okay. Front, front ceiling. Oh hey, my God. That's so much there better. we go. Go see. <laughs> Wait. This is that stupid audiophile grade switch. Yeah, we got a video coming about this, ladies you and gentlemen. That's the worst part. It's just up to two thousand megabits per port. Like it's not wrong. But oh my God, is That's that the most misleading thing I've ever super seen? Super misleading. Oh, it actually like, makes yes, me. Yes, it's full duplex. Yes, technically you can send a gigabit each way, but that's not how anybody else interprets talks that. about it. Yeah. Looks pretty bright, hey? Yeah. Well, well 50, not with the lights on. This is that 50% brightness. 50%. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's way more than necessary. Oh my God. <laughs> the lights are on oh my and God. the window is open. This microphone is so that the receiver can automatically calibrate for the room that it's set up in. So what we do is we take it and we put it right on Jake's face right here because that's the listening position. Sorry, Jake, just one second. I need you to kind of hold still for a second. Oh, well, he's got a defective face. Sorry, defective face. We're going to have to put it here. That's kind of... That's kind of centered enough. While they do boring software configuration stuff in here that you can actually check out in the previous video, David and I are going to grab an LTT hoodie so we don't get cold, and we're gonna head outside. Oh, right, indoor hoodie, lttstore.com. We're not promoting this one right now though because we're out of stock, so buy a WAN hoodie or a SWAT kit. In the longer term, I think a wooden shutter of some sort is gonna be the solution to completely blocking light at that window, but for the time being, ah. We've got a handful of options. We've got this duvetine, which is like a heavy light control fabric that we use for filming. Uh, we've got RAM board, which is just basically rolled cardboard. We've got garbage bags. David and I are gonna go see what our options look like and figure out what works. I'd say the most temporary solution is definitely the RAM board. Why don't we try it? Let's see if we can get a good light seal. And if we can, then maybe we'll just go with that. I don't really wanna chuck some of our duvetine outside. Ah. Oh no, did I go wide enough? Uh-oh. David, uh, did I go wide enough? So. Oh, not even close. Yeah, this is really not ideal, what I'm doing here. How darkened do you think this probably is? Pretty dark. All right. This worked pretty well, though. Hey, look. Yeah. Oh, like there's a gap there. It's, oh. not, it's not bad, though. You, what, are you gonna go fix it? Yeah, I'm gonna fix okay, it. Okay, here, hold on, before I'm you go. I'm just gonna do the duvetine Before you go, center channel, front right. Surround right, surround back right, surround back left, surround. A lot of speakers. Wow. Hey look, you wanna hear some wubs? Okay, that's enough wubs, I think. Okay. Everybody oh. shut up. There, Jamie, you sitting? Yep, David isn't though. Sit your ass down, David. We have the plastic covers on the grills for the ceiling speakers, so it completely screwed the calibration. We could just like shout out SVS oh, right now. This is, this is their Ultra 5.1 setup. Then we've got their uh, PC2000 yeah, PC subwoofers. And the in ceilings are from Klipsch. These are RPC 180. 180i or something like that. They, these things sound great like compared to my old Sonos setup. Just All like of these speakers the sound in amazing. Oh my God, these seats have memory. Shut up. I don't know how you set it, but I just clicked that button and it just Okay, look, I go to a different position and click I again. <laughs> Shout out Valencia. Thank you. These theater seats are actually incredible. Yeah, the first thing our contractor said when he came in here, he was just like coming in to check out what we were working on. He's like, 
I don't know how I'm gonna get back up from this chair. We take our reactions very seriously. We've all like actually not experienced this yet. Okay, you guys ready for some sound demos? Whee! Of Dolby Technology. Actually, the center channel down there is like fine. It's fine. It does a really good job of now, putting it in front of you. Moves around you in three-dimensional space with breathtaking audio quality. The, sub, the subs need to be more. It brings the on-screen action alive. <laughs> I mean, this demo really is not very impressive right now with the lights on. It but still looks pretty good. It's very this usable. What, this is like what I'm used to with most projectors, you know, like the audio. Oh man, I really, I feel like I'm in a movie theater right now. Oh, me too. It's like, like it's full. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> okay, that. The top channels. That's pretty cool. <laughs> this is a cool demo. I'm gonna turn it down a tiny bit. Yeah. Wow. Dude, is this a TV or is this a projector? I would have a hard time telling you. Really hard time. In this environment, for real though. Like, holy sh! Oh my god. My mind is just blown right now. Like, look at the blacks. That's pretty good, man. Come I can't on. believe this projector. I know it's still a lot look, of money, look at that. but I can't believe this only costs five thousand dollars. I gotta be honest, guys. This is like, a, this is like a, I made it moment. I have wanted a home theater for so long. This is legitimately a dream come true moment for me right now. So this is where you get to a point where you might want to tweak the HDR on the projector a little bit, but uh, yeah. still, the amount of detail in the, in the shadows. Crazy pitch. Oh boy. You know how you were talking about that, uh, how you can have like projector screens that automatically aspect ratio yeah. control? Okay, we could do a poor man's version of that. We just have a couple little motors and just like a, like a yes. duvetine or a velvet thing that just goes and so that you don't get that spill. That's basically what the fancy ones do. Oh, really? Oh, I would have thought they would like extend or something. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's just a curtain that covers the front. I'm willing to bet if your name is Mark Zuckerberg, there's one that like freaking reconfigures on its own. Mind you, you probably have a, the wall at that point. Yeah, but I mean like they literally, it's just like a curtain that covers part of the screen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well then yeah, we could totally do that. I bet we could like DIY that. Yeah. Just like we're gonna DIY this segue to our sponsor. Our sponsor. Fresh books. Now I'm gonna go ahead and guess that you're not an accountant, which is why you're gonna love this software. It's built for freelancers and small business owners who don't have time to waste on invoicing, accounting, and payment processing. In fact, FreshBooks users can save up to 11 hours a week by streamlining and automating pesky admin tasks like time tracking, following up on invoices, and expense tracking with features like the new digital bills and receipt scanner. Over 24 million people have used FreshBooks and love it for its intuitive dashboard and reports. It's easy to see exactly where your business stands, and it's even easier to turn everything over to your accountant come tax season. 94% of FreshBooks users say it's super easy to get up and running, and with award-winning support, you're never alone. So to try FreshBooks free for 30 days, no credit card required, go to freshbooks.com Linus and get started today. And then what are you gonna do with those 11 more hours a week? You could go hiking, you could you could play video games, you could eat food. If you guys enjoyed this video, there is tons more house content. It's kind of devolved into just me, Jake, and an assortment of other side characters just shooting the breeze. Um, but apparently you guys enjoy it, so there's gonna be lots more coming. Uh, big shout out to SVS, big shout out to Klipsch, uh, Illune Vision who sent the screen. Uh, God, what's the other one? Valencia Theater Seating. Yeah. Oh man. Especially big shout out to them. How's the seats, kids? Comfy. Yeah? 